Hello, it's Technology Central here, and welcome to this tutorial on our top 10 formulas in Google Sheets. This is our second tutorial in our six part tutorial series on how to use Google Sheets. In this tutorial, we're going to briefly talk you through the 10 formulas we think are most important to know if you're working in Google Sheets. We're going to give brief examples of how to use each of the formulas. For a more detailed tutorial, we're going to have dedicated videos on each of these formulas on our channel. There'll be links to them in the description below, so go and check them out. Let's get started with some basic maths functions. In this tutorial, we're going to look at how to do the add, subtract, divide and multiply functions. Let's get started with addition. Every formula in Google Sheets starts with an equals. So begin by typing in equals. Now we need to enter our formula. We want to add this cell to this cell. So we start by selecting the first cell, which is A2. We then type the plus sign because we're going to be doing addition. Then select the second cell we want to add. If we want to add more than two cells, we can continue using the plus sign and then selecting the rest of the cells we want to add. Once we're done, press enter. And we can see that we have added these two values together. If we change one of these values, say to 30, the formula will update and this value will change automatically. Now, let's do subtraction. Again, we start with an equals, select the first cell, this time we're going to use a minus sign for subtraction and then select the second cell and again press enter. Now let's look at division. Again type equals, then select the cell that contains the value you want to divide from. Then put a forward slash and then select the cell that contains the value you want to divide by, in this case 10. And then press enter and you can see that we've done the division. Finally, let's look at multiplication. Type equals, select the first cell, and then enter the star symbol. On most UK keyboards, this will be found by pressing shift and then the number eight. And then select cell B, which contains the second value that we want to multiply by, and press enter. And as we can see, we've done our multiplication. Google Sheets has lots of built-in maths functions, like the ones you can see below. We go into more detail in them in our dedicated tutorial on maths functions. Next, we're going to look at the min and max functions in Google Sheets. The min function gives you the minimum value in a range of data. Similarly, the max function gives you the maximum value in a range of data. Let's use the min function first. To enter it, we type equals then min, and open brackets. We now need to give it the range of values that we want to find the minimum value in. We want to find the minimum total, so we're going to select this range. Do that by clicking on the top value in that range, holding the left mouse button down and dragging down until you reach the bottom of the range. Now just close the brackets and press enter, and we can see it's returned the minimum value in this range of data. Let's now repeat this process for the max function. We start again by typing equals, followed by the word max, and opening a bracket. Again, select the range, close our bracket, and press enter. And we can see we've now got the maximum value. Next, we're going to look at the if function. The if function lets you apply logic and change the value you output based on the result of that logical statement. To construct a logical statement, we need to know the logical operators. They're listed here at the top of the page. In this example, we want to put the word yes in target reached if our profit is greater than our target. Otherwise, we want to put the word no. Let's do that now. Start by typing equals if and opening a bracket. The first thing we have to enter is a logical expression. We want to know if our profit, selecting the profit cell here, is greater than, so we use the greater than logical operator, 
and then we want to know if this is larger than our target. So we then select our target. That completes our logical expression. We now put a comma. And now we enter the value if true. This means that if D9 is greater than E9, we'll output this value. We want this to be yes. Because yes is a string or a word, we have to enter it with speech marks around it. So we enter the word yes with speech marks around it. Now we put a comma and enter the value if false. This is no, so we enter the word no, again with speech marks around it. Finally, close our brackets and press enter. And we can see we get the word no here because our profit is less than our target. We might want to apply this function to all of the rows in this table. To do that, come to the square at the bottom right hand side of this cell, click on it, hold your left mouse button down and drag down to fill the rest of the table. And as you can see, we've now dragged that formula down and it's been applied to every one of these rows. We can see here that our profit has exceeded our target, so the word yes has been output from our if formula. Now let's look at the sum formula. The sum formula adds up all of the values in a range. It's much like addition, however it's much easier to enter if you're adding a large range than summing each of the cells individually. We want to find our total profit, so we're going to sum all of these values. To do that, start by entering the equal sign, followed by the word sum. Open brackets, and now select our range in the same way as we did earlier. Finally, close our brackets and press enter. And we can see we found the sum or added up all of these values. As a second example, we might want to find the total quantity of items we've sold. Again, we start with equals sum, open brackets, select the range, close the brackets and press enter. And that's found our total quantity sold. Next, we're going to look at the average formula. There are several different types of average, and the average formula returns the mean. We're going to use the average formula here to find the mean number of items sold. The mean is equivalent to adding up all of these values and then dividing by how many there are. We do this by typing equals average, opening brackets, and then selecting this range, closing our brackets and pressing enter. And you can see we found our average. Let's repeat that for the price. Again, type equals average. And then select all of our data containing the prices, close brackets and enter. And we found the average price. Another example of an average is the median. The median is where we take the largest and smallest values and find the middle point. Let's find the median price by typing equals median, then selecting the range of values that contain our prices, closing brackets and pressing enter. We've now found our median price. The final type of average is the mode. The mode returns the value which occurs the most frequently. This doesn't really make sense in our example and would typically be used for much larger data sets. However, we're going to enter the mode function here just as an example. We type equals mode, open brackets, and again select our price range, close brackets, and press enter. We can see it's returned nine pounds because nine is tw entered twice in our data set and none of the others are repeated. Next, we're going to look at the rank function. The rank function will put all of the values in a range in order and tell you where your current row sits within that range. Let's see it in action. Type equals rank and open brackets. The first thing we enter is a value. This is the value we want to rank. I want to rank our total income, so we're going to select this total column. Put a comma. And now we need to give it a range of data. We're going to rank it out of all of our total incomes. So we're going to select this range of data. Then close brackets and press enter. 
we can see that this gets the rank 4. You may be tempted to simply drag this formula down. However, this won't quite work. For example, if I do it here, we'll see that the rank here is wrong. That's because this range has also shifted down. If we want to drag this formula down, we need to fix the range of data to stay the same. Let's do that now. We can keep a cell value the same when you drag a formula using the dollar sign. Enter dollars after the column and the row. So as we can see here, we've got dollar $d, dollar $2, colon, dollar $d, dollar $7. Now press enter. Now when we drag this formula down, we can see that the ranks are correct. And that's because our range has stayed the same because we put the dollar signs around it. Next, we're going to look at VLOOKUP. This lets you look up a value within a table of data. Your table must be sorted in ascending order based on the value that you're looking up. We're going to be looking up an item, so these must be sorted in alphabetical order starting with B and ending at T. We're going to use VLOOKUP to find the price of an item. Let's enter that function now. Start by typing equals VLOOKUP. First is the search key. This is the value that we want to look up in our table of data. That's going to be this column here. Next put a comma and we're going to give it the range of data. This is going to be our whole table. So we're going to select it as so. Finally, we need to give it the index that we want to return. So we're going to search down here for our item. This is column 1. We want to be returning the price, which is in the third column. So this is going to be index number 3. Finally, close the bracket and press enter. And we can see that we got the value of the book as £9. If we change this to say headphones, we can see that it's correctly read that as £34. HLOOKUP is very similar to VLOOKUP. Instead, your table is laid out horizontally. The V stands for vertical and H stands for horizontal. The reason that your data must be sorted in ascending order is to allow for inexact matching. In this example, we're going to be finding someone's tax rate based on their income. The HLOOKUP function will stop at a point in the table where this value is less than the value entered. That means that this 40,000 is less than 50,000, so we'll stop at this 12,500 band here. Similarly for vertical VLOOKUP or alphabetical things, if we entered something which came alphabetically before headphones, we'll stop before headphones and we'll stop at game. Let's now enter the HLOOKUP function. We start by typing equals HLOOKUP. Again, enter the search key. That's going to be our income. Put a comma. Select the range. Again, put a comma. And now we return the index. That's going to be index 2 because it's the second row in our table that we want to return the value of. Close our brackets and press enter. And we can see we've returned 20%. It's important to note here that this is an oversimplification of how tax rates are calculated. Don't use this as a way of calculating your tax rate. Next, we're going to look at a concatenate function. This lets you combine two or more words into a single word. We're going to use it to combine someone's forename and surname into their full name. We start by typing in equals, then concatenate. We then give it string one, which is going to be our forename, put a comma, then string 2. We don't have a space between the names which we're going to want in our output. So we're going to give it a string which contains a space. Do that by putting speech marks, a space, and some closing speech marks. Finally, put a comma and select the surname. Close our brackets and press enter. And we can see that we've combined the names into one string. Drag this down to do that for the rest of the names in our table. Next, we're going to look at the count function. The count function 
works out how many of the entries there are in our table of data. We're going to type equals count and then select our range of data. Close the brackets and press enter. We get the value 6. That's because there are 6 people here whose age has been entered into our table of data. If one of these got deleted, say this one, this will be updated to 5 automatically. Finally, we're going to look at the round function. The round function allows you to round a floating point or decimal value to any level of precision you choose. We're going to start by typing equals round. Select our value. Close the brackets and press enter. By default, round will round to the nearest whole value, in this case 7. We're going to enter the round function again below, but this time specify a number of decimal places. We've got the value A3 here, and this time we're going to put a comma, then the number 2. That's to specify two decimal places. Close our brackets and press enter. And we can see that we've rounded it to 0 0.09. So we've got two decimal places. That's all we wanted to show you in this tutorial. We hope you found it useful. Make sure you check out the dedicated tutorials on some of these functions that you want to learn more about. Also come back to our channel to watch the rest of the tutorials on how to use Google Sheets or other similar software products. But for now, thanks for watching. Leave a like, subscribe and leave a comment. And we'll see you next time. Goodbye.